When HIV first enters the human bloodstream, the virus circulates throughout the body. The protective surface of HIV is studded with particular proteins called GP120, and inside is a capsid that contains the viral RNA and viral enzymes. Initially, the GP120 protein on the virus is only able to bind to a cell surface protein on the macrophage called the CD4 receptor. A second receptor protein, CCR5, must also be present on the macrophage for the virus to enter the cell by endocytosis. Viral RNA and enzymes are released into the cell's cytoplasm. Reverse transcriptase uses the viral RNA to synthesize first a strand of viral DNA and then the complementary DNA strand. The viral DNA then moves to the nucleus of the cell where it integrates into the host cell's DNA. Transcription of the DNA within the nucleus now results in the production of viral RNA. This viral RNA can serve as the genome for new viruses and can be used as messenger RNA to produce viral proteins during translation by the ribosomes. Complete viruses are assembled and released from the cell via exocytosis, which causes little harm to the macrophage. HIV cycles through macrophages over a period of years and continues to multiply while doing little apparent damage to the body. Eventually, the gene that codes for the GP120 protein is altered by mutation. The altered GP120 protein changes its co-receptor allegiance and now binds to a different co-receptor, CXCR4, which is found on the surface of CD4 plus T cells. The same processes occur within the T cells, resulting in new virus particles. However, as these new viruses leave the T-cell, they rupture the plasma membrane, which kills the cell. As these newly released viruses invade and destroy other T-cells, the body's immune response is weakened, and this leads directly to the onset of AIDS.